as I start to film a video, you can hear my youngest Ezra. Uh, I don't know if you could hear that or not, but he's screaming at the top of his lungs. Mummy's obviously dropped something. Anyway, the joys. Is he all right, babe? Is he everything okay? One more minute, Eli. But you can come and help me do this video. Do you want to come and help me, mate? Come on, footballer. You close that door for me, dude. You can come and help me because you're great with this stuff. Come on. I'm going to meet my son now. Here he is, look at this. Sunday morning football. Here he is, here he is, here he is. What teams do you play for, Eli? Cheadle Gatler. Cheadle Gatler. Cheadle Gatler. Good, aren't you? You scored goals last week, didn't you? Yeah. Played our first little yeah. practice game. Yeah. Are you going to help me? We're going to do a video for feet. You sit next to me, dude. So, okay, <clears throat> this is what we're going to do with my little helper. Feet, your feet, they're such an important part of our anatomy. What we want to do is to, one, just bring more awareness to the feet, look after them a little bit more, understand how important they are for every aspect of our life. They carry many of us to every experience that we have, so they're super important. So for most of our lives, we shove our feet in socks, and then we shove them in shoes, and we keep them in shoes, right from being young all the way through to being adult, and we rarely, rarely, rarely walk around barefoot anymore. And what happens is, because we do this to our feet, these little kind of like foot coffins or feet coffins that we um, place our, our feet into, which we could call shoes, I guess. Um, your feet all do this, don't they? Your toes all kind of screw up and become all decrepit and tight. And then that has lots of implications on onto our balance, our performance in movement and exercise, but also implications to it's been linked to our nervous system and in particular, our fascial system which we won't stop on that now, I've got loads of videos here on that. So they're having negative impacts on all these aspects of our, of our body and our physiology. So what we want to do is start to do some movements and some exercises, some daily practices that help balance that out. Let's go through daily practices first. First thing you can do <clears throat> is one of these. Do you know what these are, Eli? Look at this. You've seen that on Dad's feet, haven't you, before? When I put it on my toes, do you remember? So you can do it on your toes, we'll just demo it on dads and then we'll put it on your football socks toes. So we want to space the toes back out. <clears throat> if you've ever been fortunate enough to watch or meet anyone from a tribe where they obviously don't use shoes as much as we do, they have almost full use of all five toes. They can often move more of their toes than we can and there's much more space between them. And there's a big hankering back to this in the health and fitness industry to say, we need to get full use of our feet back. So we want to stretch those toes back out. So a daily routine of spaces is brilliant. You know, just spending a few minutes. You don't have to do anything apart from stretch your toes out. My toes on my left side are a little bit more mangled than one on the right. So on the right side, it's not too bad. And then we literally, we sit in those babies, get doing your work get doing your cooking, get doing whatever it is, watching your telly, chilling. <laughs> oh, there he is, look at, look at, he's got some right yoga postures, this dude, look at that, open hips, eh? Are you doing Buddha? He's doing Buddha, I've got two Buddhas. I've got my bud and Buddha. So we space those out, toes are all separated, and you can leave them there. I mean, I try to get like an hour's work in, if I can. Uh, if it starts feeling incredibly uncomfortable, obviously you take them out. As for other stuff that we can do, massaging your feet, super important. Get some oil. I'm not going to do it now because I'm going to do some work. Massaging your feet. If you're fortunate enough to have someone at home or a friend of yours or a partner you can do a bit of swapses with, that's even more incredible because you're doing a, bit of, doing a bit of karma yoga there too. So you're helping someone out, giving them a good experience. So do like a little foot swap. Warm the oil up and then quite simply apply the oil to the foot and then use your thumbs to strip along the tissue of the feet and the toes. Massage and breath work are for me the two most important holistic practices and physical practices that we can do to enhance the way our system works. Our brain, so therefore our mind, our emotions, our conscious experience, but also our physical body, our working tissues as well. Massage and breath work are the most direct inroads so working with our nervous system and our brain, super important. So again, three to five minutes, massage the feet out, stretch all the toes. And then as a bit of a stretch routine, what we can come into is we can use these balls. So these are 
massage balls. I always have loads of these lying about. We use these, don't we, Eli? But a tennis ball, a new tennis ball, one that's nice and strong and doesn't have too much give so we can use that surface a little bit more. What I wouldn't suggest using, I have actually got some, but I won't grab them. These, these massage balls, which are incredibly dense, they're really, really, really tough and really hard. And many years ago, when I first started practicing as a, as a therapist, sports therapist, the idea was that we were using these implements to break tissue down. So the harder, the better, and the more pain that you could withstand, the better. Oh, amazing. We now know that isn't true. That isn't true. We don't break tissue down. It would be, it's almost impossible to break the tissue down by using implements. And if we did break the tissue down and break the fascia down and break these knots down, the scar tissue down, ourselves or whoever was having the tissue broken down would be in that much pain that they'd be in hospital and A&E pretty short after. So we're not breaking the tissue down. What we're doing, we're trying to stimulate the tissue and to stimulate the fascial part of the tissue and the muscle tissue in order to induce a relaxation response. So we want some pressure, something that's uncomfortable, discomfort's fine, definitely not pain. A good thing to do is when we come into these actions, I'm gonna stand up for a second. When I come into these actions, what I'm gonna to start to do is just start to roll my foot and the grooves of my foot into the ball. And what I want to do, my barometer is the breath, okay? So if I'm holding the breath and I'm, ugh, oh, this is killing me and it's painful, then you're creating more stress and more tension and more angst in the system. So how are your muscles, how are your tissues gonna relax? How are you gonna repair stuff? You can have that one, yeah, dude, you can have that one. Um, so we wanna make sure that I can feel this, of course I can, I hold my hand as you do it, get your balance. I can feel I this. You can do it, you do it, dude, that's it. You can just stand here for me one sec. <laughs> Hey, this has gone well, this video, hasn't it? This tutorial. We won't redo this one at all. <laughs> I'll still probably upload it. Um, we want to feel the sensation, but my breath is calm and relaxed. If you can, we seal the lips. Like I always say in every video and tutorial, you breathe through the schnoz, okay? Inhale through the nose, pause, exhale through the nose. And then as you become more accustomed to the sensations of the ball, you can dig in a little bit more. It's still not painful, it's still not hurting me in any way, but it does feel uncomfortable, and there's discomfort. And I always say we aim for two to five minutes, and that's really dependent on how long that you've been using these techniques for, and how much time you've got. When I do this in class and with uh, students and people that I work with, and friends of mine that I work with, and the family, we just set a timer. Two minutes on one foot, two minutes on the other. And we try to work into the instep, into the heel, all across the toes and soles of the feet as well. And then what happens is the tissue starts to release. Final thing that we do within this routine, dude, you just come here for me. Sit there for me, you've got our alignment sticks, eh? Final thing that we're gonna do, really simply, we tuck the toes, we do a toe tuck. And then, yin yoga teachers out there will know of this. A couple of my friends who are yin yoga teachers, so Morven and Karen and Rachel, uh, who all work as part of Yoga Life. Um, they do this quite a lot. It's a, it's a brilliant technique. So it stretches the tissues out there. It stress, stretches out the plantar fascia, one of the most important fascias that we can work with. And what we do is, I like to use mobility work and movement work. I always think that's really important and particularly, you know, my preference, it works better for me. So I'm just gonna rock my hips from side to side. And again, discomfort is fine. Discomfort's good. It's a good thing. It helps the body to adapt. It brings our consciousness and awareness there. <laughs> is this getting worse? Okay, more implements and a harmonica as well. As you can see, the room that we set up as kind of our exercise and gym room also has all our musical instruments in as well. There's drums in here and all sorts of stuff. Um, anytime it feels uncomfortable, you quite simply jump forwards, wriggle your toes and wriggle your feet, and then you come back, you tuck your toes under and you do the same. Now again, I instruct this to be for one to two minutes, dependent on how familiar you are with the sensations. If we can get up to two minutes, brilliant. Then we'll give your toes a rest, and then we'll come in for a long stretch with them. So we'll tuck them again. So we've mobilized them, we've used the balls, we've created this window opportunity, we've mobilized them, now we stretch. Now in the stretch is where breath comes to the fore. 
Close your eyes, seal your lips, breathe through the nose. Have the palms turned up. I want you to breathe in for a count of four. Hold for one. Breathe out for a count of six. Hold for one. So we'll do that together. We breathe in for four, three, two, one. We hold. Breathe out. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Give me one more if you can. Breathe in. Four, or one, sorry. Two, three, four. We pause. Breathe out. Six, five, four. Three, two, one. Cool, that's enough. Eli, we can't play that just yet because Daddy's filming this video. Give me one second, dude, and I'll play with you. Wriggle your toes, make sure none of them have fallen off because it might feel like that. And then this is how we end. We roll over toes. And because of how the plantar fascia work, they actually start to release the back of the legs and the lower back tissue as well. So I want you to stand and then I want you to just let the body hang in a forward fold, Uttanasana. Relax. Seal the lips, take a few deep breaths, the soles of the feet are released, the back of the legs are released, the calves are released. And wherever that fold is for you, see whether you can fold over forearms. You can do this, Eli, can't you? Okay, down we come. Once we come out of that, let's retouch on the toes, give them a little stretch, each individual toe, work from the little toes inwards towards the big toe, stretch them forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. Wriggle the feet. A little bit of a massage. Boom. Now that's the instruction video is quite long, but when you're putting that together in a short routine, you're talking five minutes. And I promise you it will have incredible benefits. While I, I try not to walk into saying that there are definite techniques that cure definite ailments and illnesses because I can't do that by a video link and I can't do that because I, I don't, haven't assessed any of you. But this routine works particularly good for anyone who's suffering from any pains or tensions along the feet or, or tightness in the calves and in particular condition called plantar fascia or plantar fasciitis rather, not plantar fascia, that's just the muscle. So plantar fasciitis, which is just inflammation of that tissue there. And for many of my clients and many people that I've worked with, a simple routine of this simple daily routine, spacing out the toes, massaging the feet, whether that's with our hands or with a massage ball and those simple stretches has had incredible benefit to them. And in a matter of weeks, lots of their symptoms have dramatically reduced or completely disappeared. But the importance is consistency. Five minutes every day, every day, every day, as often as you can through the week. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the eldest of my two boys, second of my three children, so we say goodbye. And should we play home? Should we go to football now? I think it's football time. Cool. Say bye, everyone. Bye. I don't think they'll hear you. Say bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Catch you later. We're going to football. <laughs>